I think Robert Maplethorpe's work has always been controversial. The merits of his work were debated on the floor of the Senate and the House. Uh, exhibitions of his work caused museum directors to be fired. Uh, there are questions about homophobia and censorship around his work. But I felt that his images of black men, particularly from a book called The Black Book, which was a collection of his image photographs of black men, that there hadn't been enough public discussion about those works. Um, and initially I thought that I would just take that book and write my opinions on the pages. And I thought it would be easy. You just, just look at a photo and say, okay, that's you know, a black man with uh, leopard skin and a spear, holding a spear. That's just racist. But it wasn't that clear to me after a while. And I realized that uh, I needed to learn more about the work. And the way to do that was to read what other people had said about the work. And so that became the basis of the piece that I did notes on the margin of the black book, literally collecting sort of quotes about Maplethorpe's work from a variety of people, um, people I interviewed, uh, writers that are in the academy, commentators who'd gone to Maplethorpe shows, senators, uh, and sort of gathered together these quotes and placed them next to the photographs and let the photographs be seen within the context of these huge debates around the work. There's an installation called To Disembark, and it is based on a slave narrative, the narrative of Henry Box Brown. He was a slave in a tobacco factory in Richmond, Virginia, and sort of had the idea that if he could get himself mailed from that factory, to an anti-slavery society in the North that he would be freed. So he found a, a white carpenter who was sympathetic to the anti-slavery cause, who made this crate, nailed him inside of it, and took it to the post office <laughs> and mailed that crate to Philadelphia. And so when I saw this image of Henry Box Brown emerging from this crate in this anti-slavery society office, in Philadelphia, and this was in the year 1849, I thought it would be an interesting installation to think about because I was fascinated by the idea of the body in the box and the thing that would have given him away would have been if he had spoken, if he had cried out on this 25-hour journey to Philadelphia in this crate. Um, but also to think about um, what would have been around him at the time, uh, slave narratives and runaway slave posters. And so that became part of the installation. These, But also I think one of the things I was thinking about is we always imagine that slavery is something in the past and that we as a society have gotten over it. It's sort of gone. But if you think about slavery as there when our laws and institutions are being created, you know, when our Declaration of Independence is being written, when our courts are being formed, that it is this sort of moral dilemma at the core of American democracy, and we still feel its effects. And so that's why there's an autobiographical element. It looks like a slave narrative, but if you read it, the information is about me, but also it's not about me because it's pieced together from dozens and dozens of slave narratives as a way to think about the past and the, in the present. I found coloring books from the 1970s, um, which is sort of the, my childhood. And in these coloring books uh, were images of Malcolm X or Martin Luther King or Harriet Tubman. These coloring books were done by black educators as a way to introduce figures like that, black heroes, so to speak, uh, into school curriculum because they felt that you know, the history of African Americans was not being adequately taught at this time. We're talking 1968 through mid-70s. Uh, so there's a very interesting kind of political agenda behind these coloring book images. But if you give a kid a coloring book, either they want to color the image or they don't. 
and those kinds of adult agendas about behind the images are irrelevant to them. And so even though I would try to say to you know a five-year-old, well, this is Malcolm X, oh, he looks like you. Um, so I realized that I just needed to let these kids kind of do what they were going to do. Um, and so they made drawings on these images uh, from these coloring books. And then I used their drawings to make the paintings that are in the show. So a five-year-old is doing a drawing of an image of Malcolm X, and they give him blue eyeshadow and lipstick, you know, which is a sort of like queering up the father figure, which is something I would have done when I was five years old. They have no, you know, kind of relationship to him as Malcolm X, it's just a male figure. But looking at that as an adult, you bring all the things you know about Malcolm X to that image, and it's quite scandalous in some ways. But one of the things I was interested in was a kind of adult anxiety about images, um, the way the kids use the images, but also to sort of think about how slippery images are and how they mean different things over different moments. If one thinks about Malcolm X in the coloring book in 1968, that's quite controversial. Now Malcolm X is in a postage stamp that's been issued by the US government. So <laughs> it tells you something about how images change, icons change over time. And what the work for me is about is the kind of mutability of those images. Okay.